Today we're going to do something special and go on a little adventure. I'm going to be taking you on a field trip for the first time on this channel. So join me as we explore and learn a bit more about Hadrian's Wall. This is thought to have been called the Vallum Aeli, or the Wall of Hadrian, after Emperor Hadrian's family name, Aelius, from an inscription on a pan referring to the site. It was discovered in the 1840s that the wall was built during the reign of Emperor Hadrian, and it began to be referred to as Hadrian's Wall. Emperor Hadrian is believed to have come up with the idea of the wall to stop unrest on the border, and he may have even visited the wall himself, having visited Britain in the year it began construction, in 122 AD. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, yeah, it's a pretty solid wall. But originally, this would have been six metres high and three metres wide at some points. And it isn't just the wall that acted as a defence. They also dug ditches and earthworks, called the vallum, working its way along the southern edge of the wall. And the wall itself follows some steep cliffs, making for very dramatic views across the landscape. The wall was 73 miles long or as the Romans would say, 80 Roman miles, measured in a thousand paces per mile. And every two miles there would be one of these Roman turrets, providing a small shelter for any soldiers guarding the frontier. The wall was wide enough that there may have even been a walkway along the top for soldiers to patrol and keep watch over the vast landscape ahead of them. This wall stretched from coast to coast across the country, marking what used to be the Roman Empire border what is now located in the middle of northern England. Now it doesn't actually represent the Scottish border as some people think, as Scotland and England as a concept didn't exist when it was built. It simply represents what was a part of the Roman Empire and what was not. Adding a structure like this alongside the border would allow the Romans to patrol and control movement of people, goods and trade, while also deterring rebellious incursions and attacks. Gatehouses were located at every mile of the wall, and with permission of the patrolling soldiers, civilians and non-threatening travellers could enter the Roman Empire. It took six years and around 15,000 builders, who were soldiers in the Roman army. These Roman soldiers were from all across the empire, from as far as Syria and Spain. Some inscriptions found along the site can provide a better idea of who these men were. The main bulk of work was done by three legions of 5,000 men each. Before the wall, there was a Roman road south of the wall's current position, spanning from Corbridge to Carlisle, called the Stainegate, a road that helped transport men and material when it came time to constructing the wall, and later connected the forts all along the wall together. Originally, the wall was marked out with turf and dirt, until it was slowly replaced with stone. A really cool part of Hadrian's Wall that you might not know is that all along the wall there are Roman forts. In fact, there is one for every single Roman mile. And you can actually visit these forts still today to see all of the archaeological remains thanks to conservation efforts. Auxiliary units of 500 to 1,000 men were the ones who actually lived in the forts and patrolled the wall once it was built. These became the centre of life for the Roman army, who were far from home and essentially stationed in the middle of nowhere. These forts would hold whole garrisons of Roman soldiers and their families to protect the border of the empire, and they would contain barracks, granaries, training facilities, and most essentially, bathhouses. It wasn't the only border the Romans built. Their empire was marked across the Germanic frontier, Arabian province and the southern frontier, across 750 kilometres of northern Africa. Another wall was also built in the British Isles, the lesser known Antonine Wall. This wall began to be built in 142 AD, so 14 years after Hadrian's was completed. The wall was named after the next Roman emperor, Antonius Pius, who decided to reinvade further north. The wall was primarily built from turf and was three metres tall, in addition to ditches on either side. It stretched across modern-day Scotland from Clyde to Forth. This wall was only occupied for 20 years until 165 AD and after Antonius died. It was abandoned and troops returned to patrol and garrison Hadrian's Wall instead. 
In 401 AD, the Roman legions garrisoned at Hadrian's Wall were needed elsewhere in the empire, and the wall was abandoned. Of course, troops would never return to the wall, as the Roman presence in Britain ended in 410 AD. But the forts themselves were not abandoned, and there is evidence that some of the people who lived in the forts chose to stay and continue to live outside of the Roman army and empire. For example, archaeologists at Birdswold Roman Fort have discovered post-Roman 5th century wooden halls and a 16th century farmhouse built on the site. Time was not kind to the wall, and over time, long before we cared about historical preservation, it was used in local churches and older castles. Only 10% of it is still visible today, but what we can see is quite breathtaking. In 1746, General Wade's military road was constructed, using an extensive amount of stone from Hadrian's Wall. This was one of the biggest reasons for its destruction. Conservation attempts in the 18th and 19th century have preserved what we do see today. A lot of that is thanks to John Clayton, who in 1843 inherited the estate of Chester's Fort. He went on to buy up more of the land with sections of wall on it in order to protect the wall for the future. The 1931 Ancient Monuments Act was set up by the government to protect not only the wall itself, but also the surrounding areas from development. Hadrian's Wall became a World Heritage Site in 1987 and part of the Frontiers of the Roman Empire World Heritage Site in 2005. Work commenced on the wall in 122 AD, which means it's its 1900th anniversary year. So far, only 5% has been examined by archaeological researchers, meaning there is so much to be discovered in its next 1900 years. And if you have visited the wall or not, walking the length of Hadrian's Wall remains on quite a few bucket lists. Apparently it takes on average six days. I think though, in honour of the six years it took to build, I'll probably aim to complete it in sections before 2028. That sounds a bit more doable. I always like going to these sites in person and I'd love to bring you along more often. So if you like this type of video, let me know. And if so, where else would you like me to take you? Thank you for coming along on this journey. Goodbye for now.